Today we're talking suicide ahead of World Suicide Day, which happens tomorrow. Now, interestingly, this conversation was sparked as a result of a third-year medical student who unfortunately took his life last week after failing his exams and was subject to, um, you know, getting repeated as well. Now, I just tried to read a bit around suicide. And back in January as well, there was also another suicide issue that happened on the WA campus of UDS where a student, also in his final year, decided to take his life because he failed his his exams in 2018 I, I don't know if you remember this story but a 16 year old boy somewhere in Takwa in the western region also committed suicide because he did not get placement uh, for SHS and this is very sad these are but just a few of some of the cases that we've experienced in the country and across the world and it's making us very worried especially amongst the youth what is wrong over the weekend a friend of mine that I've known for a while uh, tweeted about him taking his life and if it wasn't for the intervention of some of his close friends because I saw that tweet at 3 a.m. He had tweeted three hours before that he was taking his last breath. And if people had not moved in on him, this would have been a different story altogether. I tried to interact with him and it looks like he's in a very bad place. And that's because we have failed to understand each other psychologically. People are struggling. Now let's move straightly to some suicide statistics before I introduce you to my guest for today. Um, Ghana records about 1,500 suicide cases annually. Now the figure constitutes about 70, uh, well, 7% loss of the gross domestic product. And also in every single reported case of suicide, there are four unreported cases, bringing the number of unreported cases to about 6,000 annually. And men are more likely to commit suicide. And one out of every five uh, secondary students um, have committed suicide or have attempted to commit suicide. This is a big issue that we need to discuss. And in the studios today, let me introduce you to my guest. We tried to get some students from um, the medical school of the University of Ghana. Unfortunately, this morning, they could not make it because they were asked not to speak publicly about the issue concerning the third year students. And so if you're watching us and in case you're expecting some of the medical students here, this is the reason why. But we still have uh, a student from the University of Ghana. He was here last week when we talked about accommodation crisis, but he's here again. Samson Tagbo, thank you so much for joining me. And also, I have Gloria Boatema Andor. She's a suicide prevention activist, also has her own story to share with us. Good morning. Thank you. All right. Dr. Joyce MFA Adokla is a medical doctor and an anti-suicide uh, campaigner. And so she's joining us here. Doctor, good morning. And I also have Dr. Ama Buedu, and she is a psychiatrist. First of all, let me start from you, Boatema, because I want to hear your story. All right. uh, because apparently you have attempted suicide before. Yeah. Tell me, when was this and what okay, led so to it? At the age of 18, mm -hmm. I lost my dad. I used to be very close to my dad. So when I lost my dad, I felt there was no point to live again because who will I be talking to? Okay. He is no more. I felt alone and I felt hopeless at that point. So I'm like, okay. Let me just end it. So I tried several times. Several times? When yes. you say several times, what exactly well, like, did you do? Um, I tried self-harming. That okay. is cutting myself. Where exactly did you cut? Oh. Your wrist? Yes. Wow. And I tried taking the parasol. on. That one, it didn't come on. I didn't take it because somebody came Walked in. Walked in on you. And then I pushed it aside. Okay. So virtually, that was the main reason. I just felt like... The one that was very close to me, the one I could um, look up to, the one who is ready to take me to the next level in life at that stage was no more. So there was no point for me to live. And it's the main reason why. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I Where was your mom at that time? Right. And you know, in Ghana, when you, you lose your husband, there's a different story. Because mm. there were people around her and all that. She was also busy. Mm. She she did not she they were they the the family were, her attention was on the family, not like children yeah. or yeah, yeah. Even though we all felt the loss. Um, the loss, but it was just about my mom. They need to make sure she was okay and mm -hmm. all that. And so now that I do suicide um, activism, yeah, yeah. she didn't know about it. Wow. And even my family, most of them didn't know about mm -hmm. it. I needed to share so that somebody out there could also be mm. motivated. No matter what you go through in okay. life, okay. life is a stage. Yeah, you would definitely come out. And then Dr. Mfa, you are a past student of the University of Ghana Medical School. Um, when you heard the story, you forwarded it to me and told me that this is what's happening, and I'm worried. Tell me why. Um, I am worried because, first of all, there has been no official statement from the school to 
suggest that one of their students has committed suicide, so I cannot conjecture. But this is what has been, I mean, said on the on on social media, and this is what is being projected. So, my basic aim of coming on air to talk it's in connection with World Suicide Day, mm -hmm. and to let people know out there that student what students go through academic pressures are real because mm -hmm. you are faced with daily challenges of having to meet a certain target and for medical school i i, I know other people but, but, but other people in other areas also experience this kind of pressure but i mean learning about the human body there, you, there's there's so much going on there's mm -hmm. a lot you need to learn and if, if if you are not well built to be able to handle the pressures of academics and then social life it will be all about academics and if you don't take care and it gets at you mm. you can easily tip into depression because you have targets to meet you, you are supposed to study you have IAs to write yeah you write exams sometimes you 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 feel you've studied enough and then the result comes and it's not what you're expecting mm -hmm. and so the tendency that you will get depressed is very high and yeah. so that's that's that is that is the main academic pressure i mean the the, the load and the pressure from not just school because there's, there's a lot of pr of pressure on you to perform yeah and then back at home to so everybody is looking up to you because you you are presumed to be a shark in quotes mm -hmm. everybody is looking up to you yeah and so when you fail it's like what do you go back home to say mm -hmm. you know so most of the, the students tend to tip into if you have a, a, a supportive group around you maybe you have friends who can check in up on and you and helps. lecturers who are supportive it goes a long way mm -hmm. to help otherwise it feels like you're on your own something i'll come back to you about your experience at, at you know medical school but something you are a student currently what's the pressure like is it that bad amongst the students all right so thank you <clears throat> i think that uh if you talk about students in this particular art, then we'll be talking about a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, suicide on its own is not only, uh, you know, aligned to students really? yeah. as it is in this country and mm. the world all over. Mm. But uh, if you take it in the context of students, I don't want to believe that it is solely the pressure of academics okay. because we have other factors that are not reported. Mm -hmm. Probably maybe few people who attempted suicide over the period indicated that probably for one reason or the other it is academic. So yeah. those are on record. Mm -hmm. But there are other issues that we can look mm -hmm. at that sometimes compels them to take some of these actions. For example, uh, issues of relationships on campus yeah. issues of you know financial crisis yeah. and all of that some people for all you know it is not about academics yeah. it is about their inability to pay their fees it is about their inability to see that indeed what they have targeted for themselves for the academic year is not realistic yeah. but how the semester has begun and all of that so just as Doug uh, posited I think that there should be a proper uh, you know a mechanism to address some of these things if not we'll be thinking that every suicide attempt in the tertiary institution is as a result of academic issues yeah. and in which in itself I don't think should be the case. For example, last uh, academic year we had an election at the University of Ghana mm -hmm. SRC level uh, where a candidate who lost the election honorably decided to take his life. He what? posted on his status a lot of things that I'm taking my life in the next minute and all of that. And we needed to deploy all students, all well-meaning students to go and look for the gentleman. And at the end of the day, we saw him at a hideout where he was almost at, you know, taking his life. So somebody like this cannot be aligned to, you know, an academic failure sure. because he's okay. a shark student. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a smart guy. Yeah. So we need to look beyond the academic performances. And for the academic issues too, I think that expectation from the university in terms of their academic issues and also from family could be a contributing factor. Yeah. Because you see, we need to be allowed to learn at our own pace. Yeah. Examination is just a way of assessment and it doesn't really tell Define, yeah. whether or not you are a good student or not. Mm. Bella, I could be a very good student but on that faithful day, something could happen yeah. and you, you will pass me. It doesn't mean that you are, you are, you are so smart yeah. than me. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that education is not all about coming to class, passing your IA, passing your exams and that. that. Because what point is there to prove yeah. that because you failed one or two papers, yes. uh, you've been asked to repeat and you take your life. I don't want to believe some of these issues until such a time that we've been able to prove beyond ordinary doubt that yeah. indeed these are the co uh, causing issues and all of that. But for now, let's tackle the issue as suicide among tertiary students, suicide among Ghanaians, yeah. and suicide among everybody, everybody across yeah. the world as we yeah. look forward to celebrating the World Suicide Day tomorrow. Definitely. Yeah. Doc, let me bring you in and we'll start from ground up. 
because I feel like uh, a lot of people have had their psychological needs uh, neglected, especially by their parents. We grow up in a home where your father is too strict, your mom is trying to please her husband, husband, and so, you know, the children are left to handle their issues all by themselves. And so you are left to stay all by yourself and you have no one to talk to. Do you think that that alone is a factor, a major factor in affecting, you know, the, the, the level at which a lot of young people have decided to take their lives lately? So, thank you very much, Bella. Um, there are so many reasons why people would want to um, take or end their yeah, lives. Yeah. Um, and like she said, um, she had suffered a loss. She was bereaved. And then all attention was just on her mom. A lot of times we forget about the people around us. Yeah. So, when you are at that point where you feel you are all by yourself, and let's remember that no one is an island. We all need people around us. So if you are on your own at that point where you are bereaved, he also mentioned a problem like um, people suffering relationship problems, um, people failing their exams and all that. Yes, um, when you talk about suicide, it is said that um, about 90% of the people that commit suicide are actually people with diagnosable mental illnesses. Mm. Yeah. And then out of that 90%, 60% are as a result of depression. And from all that they have spoken to, you could tell that there is some form of depression, depression where yeah. people are at their lowest point mm, and then they are left on their own. And mm. depression is such that you get to the point where you have a sense of um, hopelessness, um, you know, um, worthlessness. There are times that you even feel inappropriate guilt. So depression is like that. It makes you feel that you are even responsible for certain things that you, are, you have no idea about. Mm. And sometimes when people become psychotically depressed, yeah. they hear voices that say all sorts of things to them. You amount to nothing. Yeah. I mean, you, you are good for nothing. I, you, I would kill you. You are responsible for this and all that. And depression is like that. It makes the best person actually believes in these things that are not true. And so sometimes they are even seeing images that are not real, scenes of torture. Yeah. Um, they see graveyards, accidents. I mean, scenes wow. yes, it's that bad. So if it gets to that point, then what people think that, well, why don't I just end it? Because mm. I've become a burden and I don't want to continue like that. There's really no reason why I should continue living. Apart from that, Mental illnesses being a reason why people would want to take their right. lives, yeah. especially amongst the youth. I mean, people are also taking um, substances. Yeah. So people take substances. They mm -hmm. are they lose their um, sense of yeah, yes being, sense like, of being and yeah. judgment. Mm -hmm. So they indulge in all sorts of things. I mean, there are so many reasons why people would want to take um, their lives. She said something that. She made several attempts. Actually, the highest risk of somebody taking his or her own life is a previous attempt. attempt. There's always a previous attempt. Yeah. Yes. So, so that is the greatest risk. Okay, okay, okay. That okay. is the greatest risk. Mm. So if somebody says, I have attempted this or I intended to do this, the this is that the person is going to repeat it. It's yeah. very high. So we shouldn't take it for granted okay. when people tell us that oh. these are the things that wow. they are going through but i want to say something you know she told us explicitly yeah. how she attempted it i think that the way the media reports it is one way we should be we looking should. at yeah. it we yeah. shouldn't i'm sorry to say but mm -hmm. we shouldn't be sitting here and be and telling so people how graphically yeah. how yeah. we do it yeah. because mm -hmm. i mean there are a lot more people who are considering it suicide actually you said that in every single um, successful suicide there's there are four other attempted. Actually, it's, it's even more, more than, than that. that yeah. It's about 10 to 20. Wow. So for every one successful suicide, there are actually 10 to 20 that attempted and did not succeed. So we should be very, very careful how we talk how about, we talk yes, about it. present it in the media. All right. Thank you, Dr. Amabodu. But let's come now to our schools. I remember when I was in primary school, they'll tell you that we have a psychologist or a psychiatrist um, in the office or a counselor. <laughs> so if you need to go and talk to them, if you're having issues, just go ahead. The whole term could go by and not even one student 
we would go and visit because we're all scared that if I tell him my secret, he's going to tell my parents or he's going to tell everybody else. And and there seems to be a fear for psychologists and psychiatrists in the country. Why is that? I, I mean, any of you can can touch on it. I mean, let's talk about our personal experiences and thoughts on um, on this one. In can particular. I start? Well, Dr. Boyd, yeah. go ahead. Well, I think is this whole thing about stigmatization. I mean, people feel that if once you go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist, then it means that problem. you are crazy. Yeah. Well, we all have mental yeah. problems. We Everybody goes through yeah. a certain phase of it. I mean, there are times mm -hmm. that, yes, I must say this. There many are mad, but few are <laughs> roaming with the streets <laughs> naked. <laughs> because many yeah, are mad, but few, few are roaming with the streets mm -hmm. naked. Because mental illnesses are just exaggerated experiences. Um, um, Exaggerated experiences okay. of our everyday experiences. So, yes, we all feel sad, don't we? Yeah. It is when it is exaggerated that it aff um, affects my function, then it, I have a problem or it becomes an issue. We all feel irritable. Something. We all feel angry. Mm -hmm. But if it's excessive, then it becomes a problem. So me the symptoms of mental illnesses are actually exaggerations of our everyday experiences. So she's not wrong to say that we all have it yeah. in mild forms. Mm. But there are various forms of mental illnesses, yeah, not just the ones that we see on the streets, yeah. no. So I think the issue is that um, once you go to, into the psychiatric hospital to see a psychologist, then people look uh, at you in a certain way. way. Yeah. But let's be realistic. Mental illnesses are just like every other chronic illness, like diabetes, hypertension, hypertension. I mean, sickle cell, HIV. So if people are free to talk about it, they can seek help. Why is it that when it comes to mental illness, we don't want to talk about the fact that I am ex feeling extremely sad, I'm, I'm feeling unduly afraid of certain situations? Because nobody would understand you. If I say I'm sad and I'm telling yes. you this is what's yeah. making me sad, I don't think you would understand so the extent. It, sometimes it comes down to trust and then rapport. So maybe for a student, the psychologist may be too much of a high person. The person could start by talking to a trusted friend or a lecturer he or she is close mm. to. But if you straight ahead go and then tell the person that I think you are sick and you need to see the psych psych psychologist, yeah. how people are perceived when they go and see psychiatrist or psychologist, the person may decline. Yeah. And, and so sometimes I think it helps when people have supportive friends around, people they can trust, it mm. all boils down to trust, people they can talk to about how they are feeling. And if you, the friend... I mean, after listening to the person's story and you realize that this is beyond you, you can recommend to the person, okay. actually help the person through the process. Yeah. Yes. But there are people who are trusting in their pastors even more now more. because they feel like they are the right people to All go right. to. So um, let me come from the family point of view. Yeah. You know, everyone has a family. Yeah. And most people are comfortable with their family. So this is it. As parents and as brothers and sisters, we need to be checking out on our children. Mm. You know, some parents don't even know when kids open school. Some parents don't even know what, what friends their, their yeah, children yeah, are. Yeah, they don't yeah. know what they eat, mm. which I think it's, it's something we need to look at. Because if you have a brother and you have a sister, and you, you, the parents, a mom and dad, you are supposed to know what goes around, as in what the child Happens does from to the lives of the kids. A to Z. Let them call you Mama B, Dada B, and all that. The point is that when you look out for your child and you are open to your child, at any point in time, your child will feel comfortable to open, to open up to you, to tell you that this is what's happened, this is what I'm thinking, I feel that I have failed. Mm. And that's, you encourage the child. You don't go like, hey, you need to pass, you need to, yes, they need to pass. But the point is that there are some that would have to crawl to the place yeah there are some that have to run mm -hmm. there are some that have to um how do i say if you have to jump you jump but the point is that we are all going to get to the destination the fact that you are a doctor does not mean i have to be mm -hmm. a doctor the fact that some my sister is a nurse does not mean i need to be a nurse mm. we are all created in our own way yeah. let's find where our kids are comfortable find to grow and feel so free to move yeah. Yeah. and let's allow the children and just support them with the love and joy of a mother than to hear that your child has committed suicide. Mm. And yeah. adding to what Batsma said, so okay. I think par it's high time parents, you know, knew that their child's mental health is very important than the grades they have. Okay. I mean, what's the point coming back home with all the A's and then you are you are depressed or you, oh, you are yeah. sick or maybe you have a mental disorder like bipolar or schizophrenia and you end up, you know, 
committing suicide or mm -hmm. you end up taking your life so parents have to know that it's, it's very imperative they have to know that the mental health of their their children psychological health of their children is very 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 mm. very very vital Let, let's move away from parents children and talk about even older people adults yeah. there are people who have lost their jobs and decided to take their lives yeah. there was an issue where someone uh, a lady who was working at gcb GC, yeah yeah she was asked to bring her school certificate yeah. because they wanted to verify and the mm. next minute she had she taken her life, life yeah. so there are so many other angles to this issue of suicide and if i'm a child and i, I should be able to open up to my parent what about an older person someone like you how is it going to be easy for you to be able to open up to people especially when you're facing some of these issues in relation to your personal life work and other things Bella, you see, it's about the support system. It's about the support system. If we are talking about family and its support system for their relatives, it is not only about we assessing these systems from other institutions like, mm. say, psychologists and all of that. You see, as old as I am, <laughs> if I go like three or four days without talking to my mom, my sisters, they will call me and mm. be like, you are on your own. Yeah. You will not call us and you feel like you are yeah. on your own. And I feel so bad. So mm. that is to tell you that they reinforce the fact that they are there for you at all point in time. Yeah. So any day you must reach out to them. One of my sisters, she will even quarrel with you. That why didn't you call anybody the whole of today? Mm. Why didn't you call anybody the whole of tomorrow? So what, what, what it means is that they are always ready to listen to you at yeah. all point in time. So as old as we may be in our family, the family should have the architecture that will listen to us at all point in time it could be as a result of the things we are facing in our works it could be as a result of our relation even in our marriages and all of that everybody at one point in time will encounter mm -hmm. one issue or the other yeah. but it behoves on a setup to be ready to listen to you give you that support and encouragement that regardless of what the situation is we are always ready to journey with you on this part either than that you may think that as old as i am maybe nobody will listen to me and even take an action to help me mm -hmm. so why don't I end it all? Yeah. It, it's been happening. It's been happening. Why, Even in the why would you take your life mm -hmm. because something isn't and working what, around you? Yeah, yeah, no. Bella, um, realize to talk to about coping the, mechanism. Yes, yeah. In relation to the support to system. Okay, fine. You are a big boy now. You cannot... It is something that has been built. That is why, okay, as you see suicide is not an option. Mm -hmm. We formed the foundation. It's a team of psychologists who are giving it out for free. Okay. Medical team. So it's Winglow Family International. Mm. We're on social media. This is the job to make sure that those who think that they don't have anybody to talk to, awesome. we have text lines. Okay. If you are using MCN, you can reach us on you text. Well, okay. Yes. Before we even go to that, I mean, mm. let, me, let me quickly just read some messages and we'll give out their contact details in case you need um, some help as well and doc I'll come to you about how we will ha we should handle people who have suicidal tendencies yeah. but Angel well Angel Adum Linda says that I always thank God for my life when I hear such stories then I should have been dead and gone by now because we have been through such difficult times more than this uh, but God being so good he's given us wisdom okay I would advise the parents to attend to their wards and be with them all the time Kineke says that sometimes the mind conceives uh, defeat on a very important lost part of life okay I'm trying to understand this message um, another one I think it's about time our schools get psychologists to counsel students schools do have that in case you don't know uh, because some of them are not mentally strong when it comes to failure Every parent should be happy if their wards perform well in exams, but they should not avoid putting unnecessary. Uh, they should avoid putting unnecessary pressure um, on such kids. Okay, Mo Kamal says a lot of our youth need to understand that when you fail in an exam, you can equally. Uh, when you don't get an A, you can get a B. Success doesn't only lie in education, and that's my view, Bella. Joseph Afari says, hmm, I believe that guidance and counseling is not well administered in our institutions. Mind you, pressure and choices uh, from family also matters. Family rather dictate what they should do. Lord, please help us. And Nyami Fell, yeah, uh, says, um, it's too sad to hear this, but parents should stop deciding for us which programs or career paths we should take. I have passed my WASI with excellent grades, and I want to do either computer science or IT, but my family wants me to do uh, go into the security service by force, immigration. Uh, but me, Paddy, I've given a deaf ear. Okay, so you've turned a deaf ear to them. Okay, I see. And John Thompson Jr. says, I think students are not utilizing the counseling centers on the various campuses. What are the academic counselors for? Seeking help from friends and sometimes online is not the best option. And that brings me to another point. Parents mm. force 
costing their their yeah, wards yes. yeah. to study some particular subjects. Subjects. And I'm sure even in medical school there are lots of issues like that. Yeah. Maybe more than maybe the other the courses. Other, yeah, because, because you give it to a child and say, maybe I was some bunny a doctor. doctor. Yeah. yeah. Come what me. Yeah. yeah. You must go there. Yeah. 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 What what's the experience like there? Okay, so um I mean in, in, in medical school people you are perceived as, you know, an A student because mm. I mean you need to get good grades to be able to get there. Yeah. And so that is where the pressure starts. You know, there's pressure on you to perform. And so if you go, I was telling someone the last time that I think we haven't been taught well to handle failure because we have to let people out there understand that failure is a part of life. And so if I write exam and I don't get an A or I fail, and so what? Yeah. And so what? And people have different coping mechanisms. What I may see as failure somebody may see as well oh I'll, I'll try again next time mm -hmm. and uh, we everybody has different coping mechanisms if i personally if i'm i'm stressed when i was back in medical school yeah if i'm stressed out with academics i sleep you i do? mean I, I take time off and then sleep i mean there's this popular saying i cannot come and kill myself yeah. i sleep and then when you are rejuvenated you get the energy to go on and on other people have several ways of coping but for some people is academics or nothing but you have to learn else. there's a fine line you know that life is a balance yeah you have to find a fine balance between everything it shouldn't just be about books 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 and nothing else mm -hmm. and so in as much as we also try and compare and say you are not the only one who feel that everybody has different ways of dealing we all have different coping mechanisms yeah i may cry and then the next minute you see me yeah, bubbly. Bubbly, yeah. somebody is like this is the end of the world and you know what i'm just ending it so we need to appreciate it and look at it from that point of view that everyone has different coping mechanisms if we appreciate it that way and we see at our kids from that angle i think we should be able to handle yes. them all right yeah yeah okay you want to say something yes. okay yeah. go ahead so one of the uh, viewers who tested indicated that students should be able to assess uh, the guidance and counseling center in fact it is one of the recommendations we should be putting across yeah. because yeah. at the university of ghana uh, I can tell you on authority that indeed we have a working yeah. guidance and counseling center. Are Not they only trustworthy, yes, of course yeah. they are. Okay. But the point is that do we assess them? Do we have access to them? They are available. They've always called upon us. They organize annual events and even a semester event and all of that. But the patronage is very low. Yeah. A student feels comfortable telling the pastor uh, things about mm -hmm. uh, his or her emotions than people who have the needed expertise and where we are to handle those issues. So yeah. moving forward, I think that we should uh, cultivate the culture of trusting these people who are well equipped to bring us up to, uh, you know, date on what we should do in situations like this. Mm. It is one of the things we should be looking at. All right. Then quickly about uh, parents detecting to their words as to which cause to read and all of that. I'm a classical example. Mm. My, my mom always said that you should be a medical doctor. Okay. When I completed senior high, my, my sister quickly arranged for me, go to Cuba, go and read this, go and read wow. that. I say, my, my sister, hold on for me <laughs> i'm not going there yeah i said hold on for me i want to be a teacher first and foremost mm -hmm. yeah. then after that we can see what next. that's where we are today so i think that we should look at the issue from the house to the school and from the university of ghana which I, I am i can speak for them that indeed they have a working guidance and counseling center not only at the central point yeah. of uh, administration but also within the various, uh, you know, uh, institutions, I mean, schools, okay. colleges, and all of that. Okay, we okay. have even full courses in, in, in yeah, Lagos yeah. that we read. I want to add quickly to that, then Professor, Professor Joseph Osafo, he says he's a sociologist, the whole West Africa. He is there. In fact, he's been very helpful. So anyone who wants to, in Lagos, their, their, their psychology department is on point. Mm. They are trying to make sure, organize programs for the, um, the students yeah. to be able to build them. So for Legon, I can attest to that oh, like you are yeah. because we work with um, do, um, with Prof and he's been very, mm. very, very helpful. And I'm sure for the other campuses as well, if you try and find the right psychologist, I'm sure you'll get in touch with them. This is from Patty. She says, good, uh, good morning, Bella. The University of Ghana Actuarial and Statistics Society are being treated unfairly. We have the opportunity to drop one of our three courses um, as we progress. <laughs> Most of us drop mathematics uh, as we progress to level 200. I'm speaking on behalf of level 300 students offering a combined major in statistics and other courses aside maths. Now we are being forced to take two months Math courses together with our respective courses we dropped math because we had less interest in it why then do we have to take these uh, mathematic courses so we have a student's handbook and these courses were not stated to be done by combined and single major 
um, students in stats and other courses aside maths okay we are stressed out and I just recently heard uh, that a student committed suicide due to poor grades imagine what can happen to students who are forced to take courses they aren't supposed to take some of us have UGRCs uh, what, what's that by the way yes, UGRCs. Yes, yes, required courses. okay okay and we haven't done that yet because we weren't able to register online some have receipts we are stressed out interesting that's a way do so tell me I mean just like this friend of mine who has threatened to take his life how do we handle such a case okay so I did see that the mm. greatest risk is the previous attempts yeah. so if somebody tells you that I'd, um, I intended to do this or attempted then we would have to take the person serious mm. so our attitude to such a person shouldn't be judgmental but mm. rather we should be empathic um, yeah. yes empathetic towards yeah. that person mm. we should try and put ourselves in the person's shoes because um, it's not easy for somebody to say i want to take my life actually uh, most of the time the people don't intend to die yeah suicide is a cry for help so oh. yes suicide so it's is not like they actually want to go no. so they a just... lot of times it's a cry for help it's okay. not as though they really want to die so once the person commits suicide then it means that yeah. the person is dead and gone, gone. Mm. Yeah. but Which when you yes but when you have an, a person that attempted and then failed so this should be our attitude towards the person i mean you should put um, let the person understand that or oh, um, yes that's we would want to understand why the person attempted this suicide, um, suicide. Mm -hmm. and then let the person understand that whatever situation that it is i mean it's not the end of life yeah it doesn't matter how many times you have failed i understand that a former president of the united states of america failed seven mm -hmm. times and there are a lot of great people yeah. that have failed mm -hmm. their exams over and over in fact Failure is part of life, life, and it's an opportunity for you to make yourself better. If you compare yourself to, um, if you failed an exam before, mm -hmm. I'm sure that it's an opportunity for you to learn better. better. And, and then someone. if you, yes, yeah. if you put yourself to it rightly, you would realize that you could even be better than the yeah. people that went ahead, ahead of, of you, you because yeah. you have had the opportunity to learn this thing twice. Yeah. And then, apart from that, um, we shouldn't just leave the people at that point. Are there identifiable problems why the person decided to end his or her life? Mm. So if there's a psychiatric comorbidity, yeah. we would have to get help for the person. If there are social factors, we need to get help for the person. Yes, and then in one of the examples that you cited, um, that um, somebody committed suicide because she was asked to present, to present a certificate for yeah. verification mm. on that actually a sudden change in social status, status. is another risk factor mm. but let's all remember that life is um, a Full mixture i mean dogs, it's a yeah. balance there are times you go up there are times that you go down when it happens let's accept it again she talks about coping mechanisms and then our temperaments are also very different yeah but we should be there for one another, another. Yes. he mm. was talking about family support it's very very important a lot of times that people will not even tell you what it's going, going on, on within with them, them. Yeah. but when you see that there's a sudden change, change. in an individual i mean no. we should be interested in people yeah. we should be interested sometimes we feel that when we t when we ask people about suicidal ideations or intentions mm -hmm. then we are putting the ideas into their heads. Yeah, it's true. never so yeah. no. the truth is that especially for us as Ghanaians, we are very religious Just, people mm. we are very very religious people and so the thought of you know me taking my life which might not be deliberate but as a result of all these um, other factors yeah. i mean it's a sin so i don't even want to think about it. it but it is there so when you ask the person about then the person feels that oh so at least somebody knows that no. i'm thinking about it and yeah. they'll open now so please let's feel free to talk about you said Definitely. because like, it's a reality it is, it is. It is. and it's so interesting you yeah. to know that 
people who who have actually attempted go on to like live rewarding yeah. and fulfilling yeah. lives mm. because at that point it's it's like a, 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 a temporary solution to their problem which they don't know i mean they are looking for temporary solutions to their problems but once you die that is it That's death it. is permanent you yeah. are not coming back yeah. Yeah. and like people who have attempted and have been uns and unsuccessful who come back most of them go on to, to live very yeah, rewarding yeah. lives. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, there's something that's very important. You know when somebody feels like taking his life and talks to you, you don't need to judge the person. Yeah. You need to give all your listening. You need to listen to the person because it is important. When the person talks to you and recounts, there's this case that Dr. MFA called me. We rushed to Legon to see a lady who won, who's, who who tried attempted suicide yeah. we spoke to her and then she came back to herself mm. so being there for each other is one tool that is very important. important and the fact that somebody has said that i am tired i want to give up it means that there's a problem in mm. every suicidal thought there is All a right. problem mm. let's try solve the problem there are times that people will text you call them and it's financial problem you ask for the money and you realize it's 100 cities if you can't we just text it to the person yeah for the person to be okay mm. so we need to be there for each other Definitely. let's live the life that if you are not there today somebody will remember you for what you what did you for did. a brother not just for yourself mm. do not brush in life and take everything for you your family and That's try and help other people Certainly. if you have money enough to spend Sponsor people do it willingly because, of course, that is what even Christ did for us. Exactly, you don't necessarily exactly. even have to have money. You yes. can recommend, even, just like she was saying, if the person needs help, you can lead the yeah. person. If you even have the person person opportunities yeah. to where you can even connect the person to get a job, something to do for the moment, anything, to anything help that's right. help. Let's just okay. decide from being selfish and just thinking about just us and our family. All right, let's look out for other people as all well. Right. Samson, ten seconds. What would you say to all students who are watching? Right well, so thank you. Uh, Bella, to all students and uh, by extension all Ghanaians who yeah. are doing the watching this morning, I want to tell them that failure is not an end to itself. Yeah. That even in their failures, there are yes. successes. Yeah. Mm. That if we take our minds off academics and some few challenges, the way of life can be beautiful because yeah. the good health is rich to provide for all of us. Yeah. Mm. For those students who are expressing their grievances on their courses for this uh, academic semester, I want to encourage them to seek redress to these issues at the appropriate authorities. Yeah. The SRC uh, Academics Committee, the University Academic Management. In fact, the Pro Vice Chancellor in charge of Academic and Student Affairs Office is open to everybody. All right. So let's initiate a conversation to, read, to seek a redress to this. Nobody yes. should attempt suicide because it's never an option. It is never an option, and that is an established fact right here on the new day. We want every Ghanaian to understand that. And don't worry, I'm sure you want their details. I'll post them on social media so you can get in touch but even on social media quickly so what's your handle okay, in case so and i'll let dr Wingler also family international family, underscore okay. international all right and we're on twitter we're on facebook we're on um, instagram okay and we have a website um, Winglo.org. Winglo. Yes. Yeah. All right. Please contact us and, and you can, be there for you can join in the conversation. Yes. Yes. Hashtag suicide, suicide is, is not, not an, an option. option. Hashtag yes. suicide is not an, an option. option. Dr. Boydu, how can we get in touch with you if we need some help as well? Um, okay, so um, the hospital has a, the PR yeah. receives um, calls on behalf of the hospital so let me get the number okay no problem yes. and yes let me just quickly while she's trying to get the number so benjamin says the problem is our education system we study things that after graduating um you know you realize <laughs> these are not things that were relevant in your field the system puts too much pressure on students from the primary level uh, to the tertiary level have you ever thought why someone without a science background can go to russia cuba china asia and study medicine mm -hmm. pass come back and write medical exams and pass as well. The problem is not the student, but the system. Everybody's intelligent in something. The system must be restructured to enhance them. Doctor, your number. Out. So, yes, so the up. number is 0577-690-753. All right. Thank you so much. And thank you all so much. I hope you enjoyed this session. And remember that suicide is not an option. Um, in the studios, I've been interacting with Dr. Ama Buedu. She's a psychiatrist. Um, and also, thank you going out to Dr. Joyce MFA Adukla. Uh, she's a medical doctor and an anti-suicide campaigner. And also, Gloria Buatima Andor is a suicide prevention activist. And also, Samson Tagbo is a student from the University of Ghana. The New Day continues. We have